Our contracts can be so confusing. What's supposed to go in them? How do you protect yourself? Whether you're already a freelance artist or you're looking to start your art business on that, this video is for you. Hey, what's up y'all and welcome back to The Art Mentor. My name is Sean, I'm a veteran art teacher and freelance artist. And today I'm gonna give you your guide on how to make an art contract for your creative services. And it's gonna start right now. Let's set up some basic understandings of art contracts. Do you need an art contract for every project that you're going to do for personal commissions? The simple answer that may surprise you is no, you do not. If you are just engaging in art commissions for independent clients where the artwork is simply going to be only viewable, maybe they're gonna post online and credit you, or if it's just gonna go into their personal collection, no, you do not need a contract in place. However, though, there are certain circumstances in which you do need a contract in place. So when do you need a contract in place, my friends? Okay, so two main reasons that you would need a contract in place is number one, if you're going to be creating multiple works for a client. Situation number two is going to be for a commercial based client. Again, this would be a smaller one that does not have a large backing. If you're going to be going through somebody who is attached to a publisher or a corporation, then to be honest with you, there's no point in you creating your contract because the corporation is going to have a legal team that's going to do it. These would be the two main scenarios in which you definitely should have a contract in place because it's going to protect you. Now, let's talk about this. If you're just doing private commissions, again, you don't need to have this in place because let's say hypothetically that your client commissions you to do one artwork and then they go ahead and they put it out on the blockchain as an NFT or they were to go ahead and claim it as their own and they go ahead and publish their own book with the cover for or they use it in a video game design that they're independently making, okay? You are still able to legally pursue action against them because that is intellectual property theft. Another really important aspect to this that most people don't know is that even if you have a contract, like I'm gonna show you how to set up in a minute, then unless it is signed and stamped by a notary, then it's typically not going to be enforceable all the time. All right, so let's get into exactly what should be in a contract, what you're gonna put in there to protect both yourself and your clients so that you have a great working experience together. And if you would like to see this as a downloadable attachment so that you have a template for it, then if you can help me out by making sure that this video gets 100 likes and 100 comments, then I will definitely go ahead and add that into the description for you and for your benefit, free of charge, of course. While you're viewing this, I have literally created this from all of the contracts that I have signed. So I'm not just guessing at this. So let's bust into this. So let's talk about the overall setup and how you can go ahead and do this. I went ahead and I made this on Google Docs because it's the most easily amendable. I can access anywhere on the go. It's really easy. Another option for you to do is create an interactive PDF for it as well. Uh, no, you do not need to go ahead and set up a big expensive account through DocuSign or anything like that. Um, but you can just go ahead and use any word processing software just to make this as simple as possible. Because again, you are a creative freelance artist. You are not a lawyer. Now let's talk about some important features that you're going to need to include throughout this entire document. The first item that I want to draw your attention to is that a contract needs to state your legal names, both yourself and your client. So yes, even though you may get hit up by Demon Monkey 67 or Demon Slayer Tanjiro, you are not going to be able to uh, protect yourself or the client with anything like that in your document. Another important addition that I want you to know is at the bottom of every single page, there's a space for both you, the artist and your client to go ahead and initial. So this is simplistically because unless you have some type of affirmation on each individual page here, there's not exactly a way to show and demonstrate consent by both yourself and the client. So this is why you wanna go ahead and set this up. Now, let me go ahead and just walk you through each of the terms that are going to be on here. The first term that should always be on your contract, in my opinion, is payment, right? Because this is the most important part. You're gonna be performing service. You deserve compensation for that. So definitely outline on here what your payment structure is. The next item I have on my contract is pricing. So this section is purely for exactly what it is, but it just basically outlines exactly how much you're charging for what type of artwork. This is going to be a little lengthier if you're doing extensive work. Let's say you're working on a comic project with somebody. You're making the characters, you're making the backgrounds, you're making the vehicles, you're making other props and other environment assets. Um, if you're gonna be creating comic pages, how many pages are you gonna do? 
What's the price per page? So this is the type of stuff that you wanna go ahead and just very clearly outline so that if there's ever any confusions or if there are discrepancies on either the part of you, the artist, or the client, this is very nicely and succinctly outlined. Now let's talk about the scope and frequency. This basically determines how many assets you are creating and how frequently your client can expect to receive said assets on here. What I do here in the second sentence is, is I actually define what I mean when I say artworks and artworks are images. If you are going to be doing animations, if you're gonna be doing 3D models, if you're gonna be doing, then make sure that you clearly define all of those terms. So on here, you can see I have a spot for me to put in how many artworks and how many designs I'm completing per month. So now let's talk about rights to assets. So I put on here straight up in the first sentence, these are meant for personal non-commercial use. I clearly in define outline, first off, the client's rights. So you see on here, I say that the client may not claim the artwork as their own. They may not utilize the artwork nor any assets of the project as NFTs. Because again, this is a huge major problem in the art community, a lot of art theft going on. Don't be a victim of it. Make sure you cover yourself on this too. The client must credit the artist, me, when sharing and displaying the artworks in any venue, including but not limited to social media websites and platforms. I would very much recommend that you keep this broad. Don't be too specific with that one. Uh, the client may not publish the artworks without the permission of the artist, me. Again, if they're going to publish it, I deserve a cut and so would you. And lastly, the client shall be given completed assets in a JPEG or PNG format. So this now leads me into the topic of what exactly are you entitled to in this? Now let's talk about your rights as the artist creating artwork for your clients. So you're going to see that the very first sentence is that I retain a portion of the intellectual property of all artworks. This is important, y'all, because even though, yes, you are being commissioned with an idea, it is not their property. Right here, here are some basic rights that you have to the artwork is that first off, yes, you retain the right to display any artwork for promotional purposes. Another important bullet that I put on here is that I basically cannot monetize that artwork for myself without the explicit permission of the client. And this is important again too, because you don't wanna be a crook and you don't want them to be a crook. So make sure that you model what you preach. And lastly, all of the rights to the original PSD files, as I'm working in Photoshop or whatever program y'all are working in here, those are mine. They're not the clients, okay? If you ever have a client that asks you for a PSD file and they're not paying, honestly, four to five figures for it, yeah, they can go ahead and take a hike because they're going to steal from you. Alterations to the artwork, y'all, is a huge topic that you should absolutely outline. I think that you should definitely think long and hard about what that means to you and what an alteration is considered. What I deem to be an alteration would be something that's gonna take me around an hour or more to change. Let's say that a client is looking at this artwork right here and they say, oh, instead of that purple skin for the dragon, can I blue instead? I'm not gonna charge them for that and I'm not gonna consider that an alteration either. But let's say, for example, they say, hmm, you know, I don't really like the size of the sword right here. Can we go ahead, can we swap that out to a totally different one? That I would consider an alteration. Now let's talk about the release of assets. So you can see here that I say that completed assets for this project will be emailed to the client. So again, here you are very explicitly saying and stating exactly what the expectation is and the method for how you're going to deliver those assets. If you're gonna use a program such as WeTransfer you would, or Dropbox, you would wanna state that in here as well, especially if you're doing a lot of assets towards the client. But yes, if you're not getting paid for it, never, ever, ever, ever send a client a completed high resolution image without some type of a watermark if they have not paid you for it yet, okay? That's a big scam, it happens all the time. Don't be a victim of it. Now, the last actual term here has to do with breach of contract. And breach of contract, again, is basically you're kind of an exit clause so that if both you or the client violate any of the terms in here or these additional terms that I'm stating here, then you are not obligated and neither is the client to continue the working relationship. All of this is just to protect both of you. And the final page down on here is basically for you to sign and date. This will also be where a notary will go ahead and stamp and sign as well. And if you wanna learn more about how to create a great art business and how to find clients and more, go ahead and watch these videos right here.